love. How complicated. Desire seems so ungovernable, which can easily turn us into fools or romantics or both. Poets call love the prime mover, but then scientists had to intrude in this love thing determined to figure it out. They weren't helpful coming up with their evolutionary biology explanations, like we are attached to our mothers for both food and love. And the punchline of their accumulated data is that later on, when we experience love as adults, it merely serves as a substitute for the all-absorbing love for mother. And that's when the psychoanalysts entered the game. <laughs> and love got dissected and inspected and detected and rejected. I like the poets more than the biologists and psychologists. The poets, the poets just seem to understand. We are overwhelmed and besotted when love comes round for the first time. And then adolescent passion gives way to carnal desire, which certainly raises the stakes. And then it all becomes so intriguing when marriage, with its social expectations of unflagging monogamy, takes love in new directions. Just as Francois Hollande, the socialist president of France, <laughs> he rides his bicycle over to his mistress's apartment in broad daylight, and the French people find it perfectly understandable, except for the first lady, who isn't even technically his wife. It's hard to figure out, the French. <laughs> but it's not just a socialist thing or a French pension for discarding the marriage rule book. We can point to Benjamin Disraeli, the British prime minister in the latter half of the 19th century, who founded the modern day version of the conservative party and who famously said, it destroys one's nerves to be amiable every day to the same human being. <laughs> we enjoy reading about love's stresses and challenges in books like Pride and Prejudice, or Bridget Jones's Diary, Eat, Pray, Love, or think about it, even Cinderella. We yearn for love to come wrapped in happy endings. Sometimes it does, sometimes it's not what we hoped for. Love has been referred to as an unruly emotion, perhaps because, as Shakespeare noted, the course of true love never did run smoothly. Still, love is all we need, the Beatles remind us, and the common consensus indicates that what we all need is to love and be loved in order to function in a trying world. Now, is there anything new when it comes to love? Well, it depends. What has obviously changed over the past few years is the growing acceptance of same-sex love a phenomenon that has doubt, doubtlessly existed throughout all of time, but has finally entered now the light of day as legal and legitimate. The right for all citizens to marry is apparently protected by the United States Constitution itself. Now, it may not be exactly what the founding fathers were thinking at the time, but there were so many Unitarian and Universalist and Deists among them that I'm sure they would all have agreed with Judge Shelby's interpretation of the Constitution. People like our governor and attorney general need to be reminded that Mormonism came into existence more than 40 years after the Constitution was finalized. Thus, it's better if the Constitution were interpreted by Unitarians, don't you think? <laughs> Social psychologists are having fun with the topic of love as they direct their research into cell phones. There's a new app that lets people make an instant date 
based on who happens to be in the area and available. The idea of meeting someone on the fly through a mobile app, app based solely on proximity may seem at first blush like a conduit to a one night stand. But those who use the app, mostly 20 something and 30 something folks, make deep philosophical comments on the merit of such an app, claiming that courtship, well, courtship is always fraught with peril. <laughs> They're delighted to skip the more elaborate mating rituals of standard online dating, which moves glacially in an era of text messaging and social networking. <laughs> the apps which use smartphone location technology allow users to post a simple profile and then broadcast their avail availability or scan a list of others who have done so. I think dating these days through the smartphone app would prove well challenging to poets but maybe love was always about fate. In probably half the weddings I officiate, or at least close to half, the couples met online. The stigma of online dating has certainly been eradicated, but what the couples probably don't know is that in much in the same spirit of the National Security Administration, teams of scientists gather data from sites like Match.com OK, Cupid and Yahoo, in order to study attraction, <laughs> trust, and deception. There go those scientists again, trying to explore the age-old question, why do people fall in love? Well, it doesn't seem they're unraveling any secrets about love, but they have discovered that many daters would rather admit to being overweight than disclosing their liberal or conservative politics. They have learned that white people are reluctant to date outside their race, which frankly did not need to be financed by a grant from National Science Foundation because I think we all could have guessed that. But I'll share with you what I thought were interesting discoveries. Major dating sites have more than 600 million hits a month. Of the successful partnerships formed online, 21% are heterosexual couples, 61% are same-sex couples. In preparing a profile, women describe themselves as 8.5 pounds thinner, while men only fib by two pounds. <laughs> However, men lied significantly more about their height. <laughs> Although almost everyone was pretty honest about their age, the photos submitted by women were on average a year and a half old, and men's photos were on average six months old. But the, did these investigations come up with anything new about love? Hmm. Yet there's been a spate of new attention focused on arranged marriages. Research suggests that parental involvement from the beginning is a key factor to successful marriages. Mary and I have tried to introduce this concept to our five children, <laughs> gladly willing to find mates for them, but I guess our kids don't have much faith in the social sciences or in Mary and me. Yet arranged marriages are usually successful precisely because they remove so much anxiety about, is this the right person? So I think father really does know best, but we'll just let that slide. <laughs> As a Unitarian minister, I have this propensity to invite scientific findings into all aspects of life, good, hard proof of things as they are, and comprehensive data that removes all speculation about anything. But when it comes to exploring love, science just doesn't provide the needed sensibilities. I do not find it helpful in moving closer to an understanding of love that women are 7.5 times more likely to have broken heart syndrome than men. And this is when an emotional breakup or death causes overwhelming heart failure or 
heart attack-like symptoms. The reason this seems <clears throat> a woman's thing is not because they are by nature more romantic, but because, because hormones play a role in this, something I've learned never to bring up to a woman's attention. <laughs> but another reason men don't suffer so much from broken heart syndrome is due to the fact that men have more adrenaline receptors on cells in their hearts than women. Well, that may be fascinating, but it hardly brings us any closer to grasping love's meaning. Maybe, maybe we weren't meant to understand love. Maybe love is just a mystery that afflicts virtually all human beings. And I firmly believe that some mysteries, like love, are not served well by scientific investigations. Even as a self-purported rational person, I prefer the poets when it comes to wrestling with the enigma called love. I think E.E. E. Cummings explains love quite effectively, and that's all we need to know when he says. I carry your heart with me. I carry it in my heart. I am never without it. Anywhere I go, you go, my dear. And whatever is done by only me is your doing, my darling. I fear no fate, for you are my fate, my sweet. I want no world, for beautiful, you are my world, my true. And it's you are whatever a moon has always meant, and whatever a sun will always sing is you. Here is the deepest secret nobody knows. Here is the root of the root and the bud of the bud and the sky of the sky of a tree called life, which grows higher than the soul can hope or mind can hide. And this is the wonder that keeps the stars apart. I carry your heart. I carry it in my heart. So be.